may be corrupted. As St. Paul said, do not be deceived, but company corrupt good morals. Don't be deceived. Escape from opportunity. Tab how to escape from opportunity? And as I said, how to sanctify your desires. How to escape from opportunity? قبل ما نقراها مع بعض let me explain it in any مثلا room like this there is a sprinkler system في alarm so what happened لما يكون في alarm fire alarm لو في any opportunity of danger the alarm will go off then we'll start to run in order to protect ourselves. Now, the alarm that is very sensitive, then actually it will give false signal. There will not be a real danger like the alarm will give you a false signal. <coughs> well, our alarm that is dead, then there will be a real danger but the alarm will not go off, will not give you warning. That's why for the alarm to function right and to give you a true warning, like one very sensitive, while I could dead. God actually placed in each one of us an alarm. Alarm to warn us from the opportunities of sin. To tell you there is a danger here. There is a danger. What is this alarm inside us? It's my conscience. But sometimes the conscience is very obsessed, very tight, very weak. It rebukes you over things that God does not rebuke you over. Well, like, that's wrong, that's unlawful, that's wrong, that's unlawful, that's wrong. It gives you false alarm all the time. And sometimes the alarm, your conscience is dead. There is real danger, but it's okay. Nothing wrong. So here the alarm does not give you real warning. But in order for your conscience to give you real warning, your conscience should be anointed, inspired by the Holy Spirit. So when the alarm, the conscience will rebuke you or will warn you, it is a real warning. A real warning. Let me put alarm in me, watchful system, watching system. To watch. Right now, if you are tired, if you are tired, then the alarm went off. هتلاقي نفسك بتعمل ايه؟ تجري ستارت راننج. فروم وير يو جيت ذيس انرجي؟ اكشلي ربنا حط فينا سبستانس كولد ادرينالين. الادرينالين دي جيف يو ذا انرجي تو ران وين ذير از ا دينجر. ان ذا سيم واي وين يور كونشنس ستارت تو ريبيوك يو اند جيف يو وورنينج. ذير از سمثينج دينجرس هير. يو نيد تو ران. يو نيد تو سكيب. There is a spiritual adrenaline that you need it actually that will give you the power to run. This spiritual adrenaline is prayer. It will give you the power to run and to escape from the danger. Actually, we can understand a verse in the Bible. Watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. And only in order to avoid temptation, you need to avoid, you need to avoid opportunities. You need to escape from opportunities. How to escape from opportunity? You need to have watchfulness. Watchfulness is the alarm system. And then you need to run. How, how you, you, you get the power to run? It is through prayer. That's why Rabbi Allah, watch and pray less. You fall into temptation. 
عشان كده the word flee or escape from temptation implies there is a danger that you need to avoid and the only solution to avoid this danger is to escape, to run and the Lord instructed us to watch and pray lest we enter into temptation in order not to enter into temptation we need to escape and what our tools here prayers and watchfulness watchfulness to be warned that there is danger and prayer will give you the power to run but usually مثلا في هيروكين الناس they don't run كده بيروحوا في الستريت they have to run into what? to a shelter right? so if there is a danger you need to run into a safe place what is the shelter here? when we run to whom we should run? actually it is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10 you are like the name of the Lord is a strong tower like a shelter the righteous may run into it and is safe so when there is a danger and you want to run, you want to escape call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ my Lord Jesus Christ save me my Lord Jesus Christ help me my Lord Jesus Christ support me call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous man runs into it and is safe St. John the short or the dwarf when he went to lead the Isa to repentance she was living a sinful life what did he do? he asked the monks to pray for him why? because he was afraid to be tempted that's why he want actually that the, the prayer and to be watchful and through watchfulness and prayer actually he avoided uh, or escaped from falling into temptation pray and be watchful mention the name of the Lord and you will escape any opportunity for temptation you might tell me but there are some opportunities I cannot escape like Muslim Joseph in the house of Potiphar he's working there and his master's wife is after him so how can he run how can he escape and he is a slave even he cannot set him uh, himself free so what should he do then actually here we need to work on the third component what is the third component my first component can be eh? what can Sorry. I mean? Sorry. desire second component opportunity, opportunity. third component action, action. So actually we need to work on the third component which is action. What do we need to do with action? Is to develop self-control. To be able to say no, even if I am tempted. Even if there is money here and I'm tempted to steal it, I have to be to be strong enough and powerful enough to be to be able to say no. You will not take this money. This money is not yours. So if you cannot escape all your opportunities the evil is surrounding us everywhere and if my desires are not totally sanctified yet and there are opportunities that I cannot escape then I need to control my actions develop self-control you need to learn how to say no to temptation no, I will not do it that is self-control but again, how to develop self-control? One of the best tools to develop self-control is what? Fasting. Why? Fasting, you say to yourself, you know, I am fasting now. This actually, why was the church asking us to fast? In order to develop self-control. Remember that sin equal temptation plus action. So, when you develop self-control, you will stop temptation from growing into sin. When you develop self-control, you will stop temptation from growing into sin. 
Self-control is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When you read Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So actually, if you are filled with the Spirit, and if you submit to the Holy Spirit, then you will bear the fruit of self-control. If you don't have self-control, you will tempt it easily. Read this verse, Proverbs 25, 28. You're like, a man without self-control is like what? It's like a city, broken into and left without walls. So self-control is a fence in the wall that protect my soul. So if I have no self-control, I'm like a city without walls and broken into. Satan and all his soldiers will break into my heart. Even for the married people, St. Paul actually advises them to exercise self-control. A long kidder. Do not refuse one another. He's speaking about the marital relationship. Do not refuse one another, except perhaps by agreement for a season, that you may devote yourself to fasting and prayer, but then come together again. The why, why is leave you alone, yani, uh, you, it's okay then to, to agree to, to stay away from each other. Why? Alone, lest Satan tempt you through lack of self-control. How Satan tempt you? If he does not train himself to stay away from his spouse, what will happen to him if he traveled for one month away from uh, his, his uh, wife? What would he do? You know? Then actually St. Paul is telling, you need to exercise self-control even in the marital relationship. Because if you don't exercise self-control here, Satan will tempt you because of the lack of self-control. But again, when you are exercising self-control, what will help you to exercise self-control? Fasting and prayer. During this time, devote yourself for fasting and prayer. Because this will help you to control yourself. So it's clear from this verse that fasting is the tool that you need to develop self-control. Because in fasting you say no to the desire of food. And learning to say no to the desire of food will help you to say no to any other desire, to any other temptation. And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will develop also this fruit of self-control. So, how to sanctify your desire? By listening to the word of God, allow it slowly to go through your senses and also to guard your senses. How to avoid opportunity? By watchfulness and prayer and running to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How to develop self-control? By being filled with the Holy Spirit and by fasting. I dropped only, you know what? But I am weak. And I already sinned. I failed to control myself. And I already sinned. However, like, if you already fell in sin, then don't allow the sin to be, to be what? Don't allow sin to be a full, a full grown sin. Then the full grown sin leads to death. And how to avoid in the Developing your sin into a full-grown sin by, by repentance. Very good. Eric Atani and Khalas Mutawas self-control. St. Paul actually exercised self-control. He said, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest after preaching to others, I myself be disqualified. So if St. Paul exercised self-control, each one of us, we need to exercise self-control. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, you will, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but spirit of power, love, and self-control. St. Paul instructed Titus, his disciple, saying, Likewise, urge the younger men to control themselves. We need self-control. 
But what can I do if my desires are not totally sanctified? Some opportunities cannot be escaped. Sometimes I'm not strong enough to control myself, so I fall. How will that? Again, not, don't let your sin to be fully grown sin, but repent. And thanks be to God who gave us the mystery of repentance and confession. Because through this mystery, through this sacrament, we wash away our sins in the tears of repentance and in the blood of the Lamb. Repentance is composed of six steps. For repentance, you have to go through six steps. It's six steps of repentance. In our Lord's definition of repentance, repentance is to leave the life of sin and to return to God, to God, the prodigal son. He left the prodigal life and he returned back to God. Repentance is the renewal of your mind. Repentance in Greek means metanoia, metania. Meta, I mean to renew, to change. Noia from the word nous, which means mind. So metanoia, changing the mind, renewing of the mind. To have the mind of Christ in order to be transformed. Babushnu can die many more. Repentance is not only to leave sin or to quit sin, but to hate sin. Then hating sin is the only assurance that you will not return back to it. Sometimes if you quit sin but you still love the sin, maybe you will relapse. But when you hate sin, you will never relapse. As I told you, sin is composed of six steps. Sorry, repentance is composed of six steps. It's six steps to I will hang it. To admit, to acknowledge your sins and your shortcoming. To say, yes, I have sinned like the prodigal son, like David the prophet. When God sent in a fan to rebuke David, he did not argue with him. And yes, I have sinned against God. So to admit it, to admit it actually to yourself and to admit it before God. Many of us, we live in denial. We don't admit our sins. That's why we don't repent. But if we acknowledge and we admit our sin, that's the first step. Number two is to develop godly sorrow. To develop godly sorrow. To regret. To be remorseful from your heart that you disappointed God by your actions. Like St. Peter, he wept bitter. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, St. Paul, you all, godly sorrow leads to produces repentance, leads to salvation, not to be regretted. Godly sorrow produces repentance, leads to salvation, not to be regretted. But the sorrow of the world produces death. So there is two types of sorrow, two types of grief. Two types of remorse, godly sorrow and the sorrow of the world. How can you differentiate when you are sorrowful over a sin? How can you differentiate whether this sorrow is the godly sorrow or the sorrow of the world? Um, the sorrow of the world is without hope, but sorrow with godly sorrow you have hope in Christ that will forgive you. Very good. Our haga in the godly sorrow usually has hope. And the God will be forgiven. Like in the sorrow of the world, like the sorrow of Judas, there is no hope. Number one, number two. The godly sorrow is initiated by the Holy Spirit, but the sorrow of the world is initiated by the ego. What do I mean by this? Uh, يجي واحد يقول لك ها يعني يكون مثلا بيعترف وقعد عمل يبكي وبعدين يقول له بتبكي ليه يا حبيبي؟ يروح يقول له I cannot imagine that I am a deacon and that I am a servant in the church 
انا يكون ستش سان سو هير واتس هيرتنج هيم هيز ايجو هيز ايمج ذاتس واي هي از ويبينج اند كراي ذيس نوت ذا جاد سول بس ذا جاد سول اكشلي از وي سي ان ذا فراكشن بي سول فور او ماي سول اوفر يور سينز ذات كوزد تو يور سيفيور all this pain it's not about me it's not about god whom i hurt with my sin زي مثلا لو ولد قام كده وراح شتم بابا وضرب بابا فقعد يبكي فاقول له why are you crying قال الناس طلع لي مش وان لكن واحد تاني يقول له why are you crying؟ لأن جرحت مشاعره بابا. How can I I curse my dad or I hit him؟ Big difference between this and that. So the God is sorrow actually initiated by the Holy Spirit and focus on God. But the sorrow of the world initiated by the ego and focus on oneself. الفرق الثالث the third difference And usually, the godly sorrow is very specific in diagnosing your sin and inscribing the treatment. But the sorrow of the world is very vague. Sorrow of the world, you're like, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. But the godly sorrow, you're like, here is your sin. And then you have, for example, pride. You are not faithful. You have anger problem. But the solution is so and so and so. You know, when you go, for example, to the doctor, the doctor will tell you, "Hey, you have a little bit of a headache. You will die. You will die. It's it's very big. But when you go to the doctor, he will tell you, 'Boss, you have a headache. The fulani is on you. It's very specific. So." When the Holy Spirit rebukes me, it's very specific, it's not generalized. It gives me the solution. It gives me hope. It focuses on the other, not on oneself. <coughs> That's the God of soul. But the soul of the world, initiated by the ego, it's very generalized. There is no solution. There is no hope. It focuses on yourself. These are the five differences between the God, the sorrow, and the sorrow of the world. So, again, going back was repentance to admit my sin. Number two, to regret from my heart, to develop the God, the sorrow. Number three, is to promise God that I will never return back to my sins again. When I ask one person to ask, I will say, what do you do? He will say, I will try. If he said I will try, معناه he will not do anything. لما يجي واحد تاني يقول لي I will do my best. عارف إنه he will try. لما يجي واحد تالت يقول لي I will do whatever it takes. عارف إنه he will do his best. So day one, day number three, to do whatever it takes. As Saint Paul said, you do not resist until blood shed. Against sin, you need to resist until shedding of the blood against sin. You did not resist until blood shed against sin. The fourth step in repentance is to correct the consequences of your sin. And the case, my Lord, Rabb, I have already repented. No, he said, if I was unfair to anybody, I will restore full for. That's repentance. To correct the consequences of your sin, and number five, to have strong hope in acceptance and confidence that God will accept you and will forgive you, because God came in order to forgive us and to give us salvation and freedom. وآخر حاجة is to confess my sins to God. In the presence of the priest to receive the absolution, as we read in Acts chapter 19, verse 18, that.
the believers during the apostolic time they were confessing their sins and all those who believed keep confessing their sins you will find it in Acts 19 18 all those who believed came confessing their sins about that about communion yeah, confessing sins and taking communion about the six steps of repentance is to admit my sin develop godly sorrow promise God that I will not not return back uh, correct the consequences of my sin have confidence and hope in the forgiveness and the acceptance of Christ confess my sins and take communion just I want to make a, a quick point here about St. Peter in number two St. Peter is an example of the godly soul he wept better but see when he and when Jesus looked at Peter Peter remembered the words of the Lord that before the crew will uh, for the, the roster will uh, grow twice, he will deny me three times. So he went outside and wept bitterly. How Peter knew that Jesus Christ looked at him? How did he know? Yeah, Peter was looking at Jesus. He was denying the Lord Jesus Christ. But in the moment of denial, his face on Jesus. Even in the moment of sin, if we put our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, this will lead me to repentance. Don't take your eyes away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Even in the moment of sin, this will make you repent. This will make Ashkadar Nazarene in our Isaac Iman and Mukamil Yasir. Looking at the author of our faith and its finisher, our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus all the time. This is what will help you to repent. So, in conclusion, we said temptation is desire plus opportunity. So, what do I need to do with my desire to sanctify my desire? How to sanctify my desire? Keep the word of God in your heart. You are pure because of the word I've spoken to you. And also guard your senses. Then opportunity. What you need to do is opportunity. You need to escape opportunity. Have by life of prayer and watchfulness. And then you run into the name of Jesus. Because the name of Jesus is like a strong tower. The believer will run into it. And is safe. Then we said sin is temptation plus action. So, how you develop self-control? By fasting and being filled with the Holy Spirit. This is sin minus repentance. So how actually to stop sin from becoming a full-grown sin? By repentance, how? By self-examination and then the mysteries of confession and communion. But really actually, that is the, the way of victory. If we sanctify our desires, if we avoid opportunities, if we develop self-control, and if we live the life of repentance, that is the way of victory. Glory be to God forever and ever. Any questions? Any questions? I have a question in terms of sort of the transition of repentance. Like when you repent, has the Lord forgiven you for your sins? Or are the sins forgiven, not forgiven until you go to confession and you're absolved? The, all our sins are forgiven during the time of the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. But I receive this forgiveness when I repent. When I repent, I receive this forgiveness. But all our sins, which can add, take, give, this is my body, take, drink, this is my blood, which will be shed for the forgiveness of sins. So then what happens at the, like at the confession? Like when you, when you're going? You receive it. 